What's up, Stephen Johnson stocks back in at my office on a Saturday, grinding, tracking data, going over charts, updating uh, information, and making this fucking video. Now, I want to be quick because there's a ton of very good information on this. I made about 300, just short of 300 bucks this week, uh, grinding, but we'll go into that in the Excel. I just want to quickly go over some comments. Uh, Sonic Max, show all of your secrets for free. Alfie Caro, yes, that's what I used to like about this guy. Now he's going to turn like the others and charge. Um, let me just quickly say, I will never, ever, 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 uh, stop making these YouTube videos and I'll never, ever, 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 ever charge for them. Ever. Ever. No matter how many millions of dollars I make, there'll never be a charge. If I ever make millions of dollars. Uh, but, uh, if I stay up till three o'clock in the morning and work 10 hours on a report. Um, yeah, I'm gonna charge 50 bucks. And honestly, I've spent over the month collating the data, uh, I've spent probably about 60, 70 hours on it, or at least 40 to 50. So $1 an hour to separate people who are not serious to who are really serious um, is worthwhile for me. And, and the reality is, if I make money off YouTube, I can work less hours, I can put more hours into trading. Uh, it's just logical for me. But t listening to you, Alfie, uh, guys comment uh, either the PowerPoint or the Excel below and I'll give one of each away at the end of the video. So I am listening. There's no hate. But I am a person I need to make money. Honestly, I don't have as much as you guys might think. <laughs> I really don't. Like I'm not selling DVDs for a thousand bucks. I'm selling them for 50 bucks and then not even a DVD. Uh, Joshua, thanks, Stephen. You're a motherfucking awesome. Thank you. But remember, I'm like everyone else. Sometimes I wake up in the one thing I'm a loser. I need to work hard to get better. It's just part of evolution. Blueprint Batman, how do you track data? Do you just look at a bunch of different stocks and find a pattern? I'd use a scanner. I mean, like after the market closes, how do you track stocks and find patterns? Uh, basically, I look at charts until my eyes bleed, and then when I when I spot something like weird, like there's an example today with MISC, CHK, and NIHD. You'll see. Uh, I'll be like, that keeps on happening. Then I'll start be like, well, then I'll start tracking all of the variables. You can track like the start price, the stop price, this, the open, the close, how much, what was its highest point? What was its lowest point that day? What was it the next day? What are the percentages of, of the changes? And I just think, well, may, if a stock on average gaps up 10%, uh, where does it close out the next day? Uh, maybe if the stock's ran two days in a row and then it gaps up 10%, where did it close? And if they're all close lower after they've run two days and gapped up 10% then I know to uh, the next time it gaps up runs two days and, and gaps up 10% then I'm going to short the spike because historic data shows me that it always closes lower so that's confusing you'll understand more in the videos live the dream what's up Jeevan here uh, good start in March uh, 3 for 3 100% win rate uh, very data oriented. Uh, I've been tracking a lot of stats as you guys know and it's massively improved me. I mean I took uh, one loss and I ended up 64% win rate. Whenever my win rate's above 60% I generally always make money and we can see that on February the 5th I took the stupid loss on AQMF then I started tracking data again and since I've been tracking data and building results and seeing the bigger picture on a lot of setups and having tight I stop so I'm not risking as much. Uh, it's been green week after green week after green week. And I realized some flaws. Um, whenever I try and go for these big wins, uh, often uh, I, I do make them a lot of the time, but I can't handle the taking a, eating a 400 500 $600 loss. So what I'd rather do in March is just consistently make between $100 and $200 a day and have that as a kind of, not a target, but a reference point. And, as, and I've proven that even in a very quiet market, I can, I can quite quite capable of making 150, 200 a, a day. And, uh, and if I lose 100, then so be it. But on average, uh, it will work out that uh, there should be no reason why I can't make one to $2,000 this month, not shooting for the stars, trying to make five or 10 grand, because that's when you take stupid losses. And I just, basically, I'm five grand down from that loss. Uh, and I'm very, very, very happy to just grind back one to $2,000 a month uh, through basically March, April, and May, and then back end of the year then I can start kind of I was overall profitable last year I just want to be overall profitable this year and then I can maybe grind out like say five ten thousand dollar profits 
uh, as you guys know, and that's that's a testament to Tim Sykes as well. Tim, like people say, oh, can Tim Sykes really teach you how to be profitable? I definitely can. He taught me how to be get profitable. He's taught us how to make money in the market. The challenge taught us the patterns, how to grind out the patterns, how to make money. The problem is that's only fifty percent. The other fifty percent is you've not got to be an idiot and get overconfident. But just so you guys know, uh, I've been tracking data. That's what's kind of helped us get back on track. Uh, the, the Excel, it's full of kind of data and graphs. First gap down there I'm tracking as well. That's full of data, full of graphs. Um, I've also got this crazy uh, PowerPoint research report. The first person to ever do reports on penny stocks. Uh, and there's a, there's a full kind of um, report on the gap and crap setup and how, how I've personally found an edge to make money from the gap and crap setup. And it, it's 50 bucks for both. 50 bucks the Excel, 50 bucks for the, the PDF, or 80 bucks if you want them both together. Uh, the, the, the YouTube link is in the description. Uh, I don't think it's very much money because it took us about 80 hours to do. That's $1 an hour, and you could probably make 80 bucks off one trade. So this is NIHD, and it was a really fun one to play because the news was that the stock had been trading in the 60 cents range for too long and it had a letter from the Nasdaq saying to regain compliance it needed to be above one dollar for a certain period of time and this happens to a lot of these penny stocks so what happens is coincidentally they have a running series of uh, email alerts to shareholders or spun good news I'm doing air quotes here uh, and all of a sudden, there's a lot of momentum that drives the stock over one dollar. They regain the compliance, and then they lose the value again. So basically, the stock needs to manipulate uh, its price to get above one dollar, so it doesn't fall off the Nasdaq. Because if it falls off the Nasdaq, it has to go to the bulletin boards, and if it goes to the bulletin boards, it's kind of like a big step down. People don't take the companies as seriously. But we can see that even just on a one-year chart, it's like, I mean, well, on a one-year chart, it was up in the twos, and then it's down in the 50 cents, it's 40 cents. So the story of this company isn't very good. Every time it does spike, it has these big wicks or these big red days. So we know that uh, people are stuck in this uh, chart, stuck in this company, and shareholders are trying to get out. They're kind of fighting over each other to get out. But when the stock starts to get manipulated, and the others are there, as a lot of uh, retail traders like to call it, um, the others are somehow pushing this up. So it's fine to be pushed up. Um, it's fine that someone is pushing this up. Uh, but for me, I'm looking at when's it going to have the first red day, when's it going to come down. And I was literally just taking paper, paper cuts, uh, shorting on the way up, taking very uh, tight stops. Uh, and if it, the trade didn't work, uh, I'd be out. So, for example, on I was one day early. So on this day here, on the on the 27th, I can, I can mark it out for you guys. Uh, on this day, I started in short, and on this day, I nailed it. Um, but this was the, the first arrow day that I was, I was pointing at, and I was thinking, is it over now? It's up from the 60 cents to, to about the ones now. So it's up double, and I've got a lot. Obviously, I track data, I track gap downs, and while this stock... And the stock gap down, so it was closed at 115 and opened at 111. So what I like to do is let the stock wash and retest red green or retest a key resistance level. Well, this was a key resistance level because we're looking at pretty much this level. You can kind of see it like broke through and then it came down and then it couldn't get through again and then it got through again, but then it closed at that level. So I was looking at this kind of resistance level and I was looking at a red green. So when the stock went red green, or when it washed and went red green, it was kind of like it's failing to properly go green and it's failing at this resistance level. So I took a short at 117 and I covered basically in the 18s when it wasn't going down anymore because it looked like the move still was a little bit front side. But the, the interesting thing was, and I've seen this in a lot of stocks, so it, it, it closed at 121 and it opened at 145. So now anyone who's in this stock overnight is going to be looking to take profits uh, we've seen it on NYSC uh, we saw this kind of oops still got an arrow on we saw this kind of a bit of a big gap from the 175s up until the, the twos bit of a gap and then it just came straight back down uh, we saw it on CHK as well 
uh, you had this kind of this move and then this big gap up and then once people start to take profits and uh, they completely take profits so I was thinking this gaps uh, way too big and as soon as it cracks it's gonna crack hard so I started building in short from the roughly around the 149s uh, and I was a little bit spooked because I'm like I've got to trade carefully I've got to have tight risk these days until I really regain a, a lot of the money that I've lost in that single trade so I was short here I was holding my breath a little bit here because I was like if this goes higher I literally have to cut it my cut was with the once if it once it pushed to 160 I thought if it breaks back over 160 I'm out and um, fortunately for me it had the lower highs people started taking the profits and it's very sad but uh, I got freaked out by this little kind of candle here in the 150s when it ripped up it looked like it was coming back uh, so I covered uh, for a small profit and then I got basically back in when it more confirmed when it when it had broke this when it had broke this kind of this like it kind of bottom bottomed supported here tried to push up and then it fell through where it had previously been kind of bottoming on the 143s then I got back in and uh, I was kind of lucky to kind of write it down a little bit further and uh, I was out everything in the kind of the 136s uh, another example of a pretty terrible company uh, this was up in the one as far as the 180s nearly the twos and at one point it was as low as uh, 14 cents 14 cents and it's floats 30 million so I mean the company I mean 30 million shares available at 14 cents it's probably like a 60 million dollar company or something like that probably less I don't know but it's it's a very 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 um, small company looks like it's about to go bust I mean just I mean out of interest let's go back 10 years and see what it used to be at and Jesus I mean this company it's it's hard it's got prints up there in the 70s at one point it's probably done a lot of re reverse splits but it was up in the fives just in 2016 so to be at the nine senses, it's really, really, really fell apart. A lot of, lot of shareholders trapped under water. But what's uh, interesting about this, especially, is you kind of get this green day, then a red day, then a green day, then a red day, then a green day, then a red day. And then kind of here, uh, we had uh, a green day, then a red day, but then it kind of popped back up. And I think maybe some shorts got a little bit trapped. And then it had this big green day, which is pretty much everyone under water, shorts and for me it was massively overextended and I was short on uh, this big red day here and there was two kind of indicators for me with this one uh, the first one was ev everyone's waiting for it to come down but no one knows when so you're looking for kind of signals on when it's going to come down and when it had this crack here into the close, you can tell that longs are getting a bit skittish because it's not really cracked like this before. So longs are starting to think, oh, is it overextended? Is it gone too far? When are shorts going to take over? And quite rightly so. So this crack was the first indicator. I was thinking, okay, I'm going to watch this closely for it to go down. And the minute it shows another crack of weakness, then I'm going in short. And again, so it ripped up, broke pre-market highs, and it couldn't hold them. And when it cracked here, I was thinking, okay, this is the second time it's kind of showed a major indication of weakness. So what I will do is I'll, I'll just short the lower high. And I was I short in here at 84, uh, risking off pretty much high day maybe, so 88, small position. And it got up to 86. I was only really ever down two cents uh, before it started to break down. And when it broke down, I thought, this is so overextended, I'm just going to let it run. And I patiently waited it out all the way down to here. And when I came down to 64, I was out at 64. Uh, so I managed to get out here. Uh, at that point, I was like, okay, cool. I've took from 84 to 64. Uh, it's the end of the day. Shorts are going to start to cover. It's almost like a good dip by here. I'm going to get out. So I, I wasn't greedy. I, I could have got 60, but I thought, you know what it is? I've took 21%. On this move, 21% is awesome. And uh, next time, I just need to take a bit bigger size because it's only in like 500 bucks. Is an experiment, and then it came back, uh, and it's it's kind of holding right now. But just shows you if you watch carefully on multiple time frames, you can really nail trades.
I know some people who think that they can just be nice, give a compliment, and somehow they'll find success through it. Let me tell you guys something, motherfuckers! Being nice doesn't get you success. Hard work gets you success. Just throwing compliments isn't gonna get you anywhere. You need to be putting two or three hours a day, tracking data, analyzing to find your edge patterns till your ears and eyes and fucking nose bleeds. Honestly, like it gets us so ramped up. You fucking need to put in a two or three to four hours every day to get it. And I know people not showing up to the market. They're not tracking data. Like they're not even fucking watching the market. Let alone what you're meant to be doing outside. It's time to get fucking real! It's time to get fucking real! It's time to get real! It's time to get real. And honestly, if you put in the... You don't have to do 17 hours. I know people like this as well. You just need to put in like 3 or 4 hours. Watch the market do a couple hours before. Do a couple hours on the weekends. And over time a few years, you'll start seeing yourself winning 60, 70% of the time. And as long as you're not a dumb motherfucker like me who gets all that confident and cocky, you won't take the big losses. But I've learned from them, I'm growing, I'm getting better. Live the dream, I'll see you later!